Logan recently sent the Kona Sutra ULTD after he completed his long-term review. And if you're interested in reading that before watching this video, you can do that by clicking the link here, but I'll also link it in the description below. But Logan loved it so much, he was like, Neil, you gotta get on this bike. So he sent it to me and I've actually been really enjoying it as well. So in this video, I'm not only going to talk about how the bike rode, but how it rode while loaded on a bike packing trip, also talk about the components, but I'm also gonna compare it to another popular bike in this same drop bar mountain bike category, the Cutthroat. So the Kona Sutra lineup was updated last year, June of 2020, and this bike popped up and it kind of was eye-opening because, well, it's a bigger, badder version of the LTD. So for starters, the ULTD has a slacker head tube angle at 69.5 degrees versus the LTD at 71 degrees. The fork itself on the ULTD is actually a little bit longer and has more offset. So in turn has a wider wheelbase. So the ULTD has 36 millimeters of extra wheelbase length. So it comes in at 1,106 millimeters. So the bike comes with a half degree steeper seat tube and the seat tube itself is a 31.6 millimeter tube, which is definitely a lot beefier than the LTD. The bike also comes with a sloping top tube, which gives the ability for more standover, but also the ability to run a dropper post. So the ULTD also comes with a tapered head tube which is going to benefit your transition of forces or in general it will be more reliable over rough terrain it's going to be stiffer and it's going to prolong the life of your headset bearings and finally the bike comes with bigger tires it has a wider tire clearance and while kona doesn't say on their website we believe that this bike can fit 2.4 inch tires but the bike does come spec with two and a quarter inch tires so i'm not going to touch on the major differences between the ltd and ultd and most of you probably can understand some major differences just based on geometry that I just mentioned. But Logan does a really great job of touching on the major differences. So if you wanna read that review, it's definitely linked below. So the bike itself is completely steel. It's made out of a chromoly fork and Kona's chromoly budded tubing. Beautiful rust purple prism paint job that just shimmers with the sun. It sparkles, it looks awesome. Comes with a variety of different mounts, both mounts within the frame, on the fork it also has fender and rack mounts and these mounts have really come in handy while testing this bike so just talking about sizing a little bit so so logan mentioned that most of the kona bikes actually run large and after looking at most of the geometry charts of some of their drop bar bikes that definitely is true because they measure the classic way which is measuring the seat tube instead of the top tube i'm 510 with a 32 inch inseam if i was to ride an ltd i probably would have to go ride a 54 but this right here is a 56 and while the 56 fit logan it just fits me uh, mainly because of this sloping top tube and short 50 millimeter stem. Sure, I probably could fit a 54 and have a little bit more standover, but I have just enough standover. And not to mention, it's always nice to have a little bit more frame bag space for, you know, your bike packing trips. All right, so let's get to the important stuff, talking about how the bike rides. So my initial impression, pedaling my bike away from my house up a hill, it's definitely sluggish but this bike is not built to be a performance speedster and so I felt that right off the bat it definitely doesn't have that snappy acceleration like my cutthroat does so I then got to a local trail system that has some switchbacks it's pretty steep definitely granny gear steep so I noticed turning the bike on the switchbacks I didn't really notice the wheelbase being too long, but one thing I did notice was there was almost an auto steer in the front end. Because of this fork is so heavy, it kind of goes one way or the other when you're going at really slow speeds. So once I got to the top of that hill, the trail turned into a gravel road and it was flat. And this bike is super comfortable, stable on flat gravel, uh, turning corners, super reliable. So really nothing to complain about. So where this bike shines, is descending and really this is an incredible machine for not only descending gravel roads high speed gravel roads super stable but also single track chunky single track that i would normally just take my full suspension mountain bike on sure i might have been underbiked but it did well and it got me down to the bottom so it's got a super stable feel but it's also nimble enough to avoid obstacles 
uh, and to navigate down a rough single track trail. And believe it or not, I even surprised myself by some of the features that this bike entertained out on that single track trail and succeeded. So overall, it took little to no time to basically get used to this bike. And that may be because of, I've been riding my cutthroat quite a bit, uh, which has very similar geometry, and I'll get to that in a second. But it really just loves to be pointed downhill. It loves to go fast. And sure, it might not climb as well, but it makes up for it definitely going downhill. Much of the characteristics that I mentioned in my first ride impressions definitely carry over to my bike packing experience with a few exceptions. First off, this bike really enjoys being loaded down. So when I add bags to this bike, it actually really feels great. It doesn't slow the bike down all that much, doesn't make it feel more sluggish. The bike itself handles that weight really well. So with the exception, of course, of the fork, when I threw some water bottle cages up on the fork, just the front end of the bike was so much more heavier than the rear end, uh, just with that heavy steel fork in the first place. So trying to minimize that weight up front, I think is important, but at the same time, it was something that I got used to. And that also kind of leads me to being able to pull up or bunny hop on the bike. It's definitely not very easy to do on this bike. Lastly, I just had to be a little bit more cautious because of this derailleur hanger. Logan told me that he bent it back twice. I personally couldn't find a spare derailleur hanger at any of my bike shops. So I just had to be super cautious about shifting under load, but I had no issues. A lot of people say Kona has soft derailleur hangers. Uh, so that's something to make note of. And you'll probably want to get a rear derailleur hanger and a spare derailleur hanger anyways, if you are going out on a bike packing trip. I love these components. They're sure they're a little heavy, but they're middle of the road components and they work. So starting with the rival shifting, some of the most underrated shifting or the under underrated group in my opinion just is super crisp feels really good and then the hoods itself you just feel really locked in they're super tall hoods if you do end up like getting jarred around you've got room for error too which is really nice so the bike comes with an uh, threaded 73 millimeter bottom bracket an nx crankset with a bash guard that's rad. They opted out of going with an XD driver, so uh, they went with a kind of a budget cassette, which is fine, but you can't upgrade to a lighter or nicer cassette without upgrading your free hub body. The cassette is an 1142, and then the front chainring is a 36 tooth. So I was able to kind of spin a little bit more when I was descending. I wasn't necessarily spun out, say, if I had a 32 tooth chain ring on this combination, I often find myself pretty spun out. But if you do find that you're riding more really steep hills and uh, you're loading your bike really heavy, then you can easily swap out to a 32 or a 34 tooth chain ring on this NX crank set. So the bike comes with a dropper post as you see here. This is a Transx dropper post, but the unique thing about this post is it is adjustable. So you can take 30, 20, or 10 millimeters out of the dropper to help accommodate sizing, or if you have a saddle bag, so you can help alleviate the saddle bag rubbing on that rear tire. The one thing I do wanna note of that though, this rival shifter up here, or they turn it into a actual dropper lever itself. So when you go to actually brake on the bike, you feel the dropper lever or the shifter, which is fine with me. It's just something that you have to get used to. And I would much rather prefer the dropper lever in the shifter itself, as opposed to up on the top of the bar or at the bar end. So the bike is specced with the Kona Road drop bar in the 56 centimeter category. So wide enough, but they flare out, so they definitely feel a little bit wider. I probably could go maybe a touch wider to 50 centimeters or so, but in general, the drops feel good. It's not a shallow drop. It's pretty deep drop, but it's all very proportional and it fits me really well paired with the 50 millimeter stem. Bar tape, not the biggest fan. It's a little thin for my liking, but we don't really need to touch on that. It's super easy to swap out bar tape. And then the rival two piston brakes, even while loaded while bike packing, they definitely have some pretty solid stopping power. In general, I didn't have any issues with the stopping power both loaded and unloaded. Comes with the uh, WTB KOM team, the i27. They're great wheels, they're super budget, they work really well, uh, but I wanted to get a different feel for the bike. So what I ended up doing with this bike was I ended up throwing on some carbon wheels just for the bike packing portion of my test period. And it kind of transformed the way the bike rode. It gave it just a slightly snappier feel, a little bit stiffer feel, 
but paired with the steel frame and fork, it was still extremely comfortable. And this is probably the first upgrade I would make if a little bit more efficient. And well, it's going to lighten things up just a touch as well. Not to mention that rear hub, this formula hub here on this WTB wheel is just not the best. So throwing something that has a little bit more engagement on it uh, is always welcome in my book. And then finally, the bike comes with Maxxis Recon Race tires. This is actually a pretty awesome tire in my opinion. It rolls well, but it hooks up really well. And I think it hooks up because it's got a, maybe a softer rubber compound. So in turn, I found that this tire might wear a little bit quicker Quicker. but in general it's a it's a great tire so a lot of you are wondering what the ride quality and differences were between the salsa cutthroat and the kona sutra ultd so before we get into the ride quality of both bikes uh, how they're similar how they're different i wanted to just touch on the geometry as a lot of that has to play into the ride and the sizing of both bikes so starting with the head tube angle the cutthroat comes in at 69 degrees whereas the ultd comes in at 69.5 However, the cutthroat does have less offset, but the fork itself is a little bit longer. So the overall wheelbase is pretty darn similar as well. We've got 1,109 millimeters on the cutthroat and 1,106 millimeters on the ULTD. Just to put things into perspective a touch, the Salsa Spearfish, which is Salsa's short travel full suspension bike, comes in at 1,163 millimeters. And the Kona Hey Hey, Kona's short travel mountain bike comes in at 1,158 millimeters. On the other side of that, the Kona Sutra LTD comes in at 1,070 millimeters of wheelbase. So overall, the wheelbase is right on par for what these bikes can handle and what they're made to do. So both bikes are 56 centimeters. So this Salsa Cutthroat, their top tube is measured at 560 millimeters, and that's where they get their sizes. But with the Kona Sutra ULTD, this top tube comes in at 590 millimeters on a 56. So much of that length is kind of made up for or shortened on the front end of the bike with a 50 millimeter stem, whereas the Salsa Cutthroat comes with an 80 millimeter stem on the 56. So we're working with 30 millimeters there. And that seems about right. The Kona Sutra ULTD is still a little bit longer. And talking about standover on the Kona Sutra ULTD, you've got less of it on a 56. The bike comes with 827 millimeters on the ULTD, whereas the Salsa Cutthroat comes at 810.5 millimeters. So in general, this is probably gonna be a big factor for folks that kind of teeter between the two bikes. So if you are say a 510, like me with a 32 inch inseam, going down to a 54 might be a better option. But with the Cutthroat, with the 56, I fit this bike to a T. Both bikes have mounts galore, not only on top of the top tube for a top tube bag, within the frame, but also on the fork as well. And finally, both bikes have the capacity to run two and a quarter inch tires. The Sutra probably can fit 2.4, whereas I've tested the Cutthroat to fit 2.35 well. All right, so I did something a little unique to compare the bikes. I rode the Kona Sutra ULTD one day, and then the next day I rode the Salsa Cutthroat. It was a pretty eye-opening experience, and I'll provide a softball or baseball analogy. So when you're in the on-deck circle and you're warming up just to get ready for your at-bat, and you throw a donut on your bat and swing it, and then you take that donut off and you swing the bat and you can swing it that much faster. That was the transition I got between the ULTD and the Cutthroat. Going from that really heavy ULTD fork to a super light front end with the carbon Cutthroat here. I didn't really have a hard time going back to the ULTD because it was heavier, but getting on that Cutthroat after I'd rode the ULTD, it took some adjustment for sure. So some major differences here are we have steel versus carbon, and these are probably the two most opposite frame, bike frame materials out there. As I mentioned earlier, the Kona Sutra ULTD just has a little bit more of a sluggish feel, but it's still very comfortable. Whereas the Salsa Cutthroat has a very snappy uh, acceleration and race-like feel. But then again, you have a carbon frame that only has a five-year warranty, whereas Kona's ULTD lifetime warranty they understand that this frame material is probably going to last a little bit longer than say carbon. So I actually found that there are almost more similarities to these bikes, especially in a bike packing setting 
than differences. And that starts with being able to handle a load or a bike packing kit really well. Both of these bikes love to be loaded up. They both perform extremely well loaded up and well, both bikes are made to bike pack. So another characteristic that both of these bikes do really well at is descend single track or gravel roads. These bikes kind of remind me of like a cross country hardtail uh, mountain bike. They both have the ability to be really stable on the trail. While they may not charge through really rough obstacles and rock gardens, they definitely have the ability to be a little bit more nimble and avoid those rocks, but not twitchy, just perfect amount of nimbleness to get you through that while still maintaining the stability and speed. So another thing is both bikes are really comfortable, whether it's Kona's tried and true steel tubing or Salsa's manipulated carbon or the class five VRS, both bikes are definitely going to be a little bit more forgiving than say an aluminum bike. So Kona built this super fun charging, pretty utilitarian mountain bike that has drop bars and it comes in at $25.99. So, well, maybe not the cheapest bike out there. You definitely get what you pay for. Decent components, a reliable frame with a lifetime warranty. So if you have any comments or questions regarding the Kona Sutra ULTD, leave them in the comment section below. Myself or Logan will get back to you. So if you like what you see here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you want to help us out a little bit further, consider joining the Bikepacking Collective, which not only helps support this video that you are watching now, but also the Bikepacking Journal. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in. And until next time, pedal further.